It leaves behind family. Friends. Fellow Marines. And a grateful nation. Sorry, Mitchell. Will was one of our best. Look, we take care of our own. If you ever need any... Excuse me, Private Mitchell. I'm Jonathan Irons. I'm Will's father. Mr. Irons, I'm sorry for your loss, sir. I'm sure you are, Sergeant. Private Mitchell, you were Will's best friend. You both paid too high a price for your country. It was an unfortunate tragedy, sir. It was more than unfortunate, Sergeant. It was unnecessary. Son... I want to offer you a second chance. Mr. Irons, Mitchell's been discharged with his injuries. I'm aware of his injuries, Sergeant. At Atlas, we have prosthetics that are 20 years beyond anything the military could offer you. Will told me what kind of soldier you were. You deserve to fight for a military that's as effective as you are. Think about it. Don't let Will's death be in vain. Sergeant. No excuse for equipment failure. Best weapon you have is the one between your ears. Use it. Resetting simulation. Everyone return to your starting positions. It was his arm, sir. I knew it was too early. That arm's worth more to me than this entire facility. How's my boy doing? He's a work in progress. Well, keep working. This is a great soldier. It's a sad day indeed when the military has no use for good men like you. Jump in. I'll give you the tour. Joker, we're bringing Mitchell over to R&D. Get the sim prep for another run. You got it, boss. What you're seeing is advanced warfare. Atlas has the single largest standing military in the world, but we answer to no country. Unlike the government, we don't keep secrets of our capabilities. We don't sell policy, we sell power. We are a superpower for hire. isn't just about the ability to destroy. Atlas has built infrastructures in places like Korea, Sierra Leone, Nigeria. We do in a few years what it takes governments decades to accomplish. In fact, the truth is, we're often more effective than the governments that hire us. As my son found out the hard way. Mitchell, I know you're not in this for the money. You remind me a lot of Will in that way. Now go get that arm fixed. Looks like we have an operator on our hands. He's getting there, sir. He's ready for some real work. Good job, son. Welcome to Atlas. Incoming Fiddling from command. Let's show them what Atlas can do. The KVA have been terrorizing this region for far too long. It's time to send them a message. A handshake with the Prime Minister, I can turn this entire region around. So take him alive. No pressure. Prussia? Whoa, Prussia. Good luck. Whatever happened to that guy we pulled out of the drink anyway, huh? Irons took that with him. It's fine by me. Badass, man. 
fucking badass. As you were, son. As you were. Is there uh, something we can help you with, sir? Well, a glass would be a start. <laughs> I'll do you one better. Gather around, gents. There's an old military saying. You treat your men like you would your own beloved sons and they'll follow you into the deepest valley. I lost my son. And it taught me the importance of seizing the moment. Of saying what needs to be said when you have the chance. You gentlemen did a hell of a job out there. Lagos has opened up fantastic opportunities for Atlas. And for that, I'm grateful. To you, gentlemen. Democracy? Democracy. Democracy isn't what these people need. Hell, it's not even what they want. America's been running around the globe trying to install democracies in nation after nation for a century, and it hasn't worked one time. Now, why do you think that is? Because these countries don't have the most basic building blocks necessary to support a democracy. Little things like, we ought to be tolerant of those who disagree with us, or we ought to be tolerant of those who worship a different god than us, or that a journalist ought to be able to disagree with a fucking president. And you think you can walk into this country based on fundamentalist religious principles, drop a couple of bombs, topple a dictator, and start a democracy? <sighs> Give me a break. People don't want freedom. They want rules, boundaries, protections from invaders and from themselves. People need a leader who can both provide the constraints and the support to keep chaos at bay. And you give them that, and they'll follow. And that's where I come in. There are some days we never forget. Moments burned into our memory until the day we die. Where were you the day everything changed? Four years ago, one man tried to destroy our way of life. One man tried to throw the world into darkness. It felt like we could never find our way back. But we did, together. When you were vulnerable, we gave you our strength. When you were sick, we delivered you the cure. When there was chaos, we brought you order. Stability, safety, a chance to start again. Who are we? We're the way forward. It's a single source. Has the intel been verified? The intel is good. Hades is meeting with his financial backers in Santorini 24 hours from now. Mr. Irons, the protocols for mounting an assault This on man is responsible for 50,000 deaths, General. We are going in. An operation on foreign sovereign soil? It would be an act of war without congressional approval. Atlas is an internationally registered private company. We don't need Congress. Gentlemen, are we operational? We're at the ready, sir. You're the trigger. I want your team on the ground in six hours. On whose authority? On my authority! That's our ticket inside. Bravo moving. I don't need to remind you how important this mission is. Hades is responsible for the nuclear attacks four years ago. We bring him down, we bring down the whole KVA network. There's no room for error. Get it done. At last, time ran out for Joseph Chiketze, better known as Hades. 
leader of the KVA and mastermind behind the devastating attacks of four years ago. We recently spoke with Jonathan Irons, founder and CEO of Atlas International, the private military corporation responsible for hunting down and killing Hades. Congratulations, you've achieved what no government was able to. Thank you, Wendy, but the real heroes of the day are the men and women of Atlas. I couldn't be prouder of what they accomplished out there this week. There are rumors that the UN will offer you a seat on the Security Council. Can a life in politics be far behind? Well, I like to get things done, so no. But look at what we've done in New Baghdad. Forty years ago, we pulled out of Iraq with that place in ruins and our tail between our legs. And now, it's a testament to what happens when you put efficiency before bureaucracy. The last four years have been huge for you. In the wake of the KVA attacks, Atlas has become the world's biggest corporation. And you now preside over the world's largest standing military. So what's next for Jonathan Irons? Did you tell anyone you were coming? No. So what? Scrambler will only buy us a few minutes. Sink to my HUD, I have to show you something. Bloody hell's going Just on. Just watch this. That's Irons, with the technologist you saved. The guy we pulled from the river. He never made it back to Nigeria. KVA are planning an attack. They told me everything. What, what kind of attack? Power plants, all over the world. They wanted me to compromise the security systems. Where are they planning on hitting? Seattle, Paris, Tokyo. Thousands will die. We have to tell someone. No. We have to tell everyone. It's okay, it's all right. I'm gonna take care of this right now. Fuck me. He knew it. He knew and he let it happen. All those people dead and he fucking profited from it. Where did you get this? Hades. His last act before he died was giving us this. How do you know it's not It was coded and encrypted in our own algorithm. It's from Atlas. No one has seen this but us. We need to get out of here. Now! We saw it. We saw everything. You saw what? You knew about the attacks. All those innocent people. You saw people. a forged recording from a terrorist. You're insane. You're a monster. I'm disappointed in you. You could have had everything. Hold them here until the reporters leave. Gideon. Yes, sir. Gideon! You know what you saw. He said it was a fake. He's made his decision. ideas are right. That's why the people you call terrorists call themselves freedom fighters. The fundamentalists think they're right, the capitalists think they're right, the communists think they're right. And no one will ever convince anyone of anything. And all these honorable men lecturing the world from the floors of congresses and parliaments whose time has long since passed refuse to admit, publicly at least, ideas don't determine who's right. Power determines who's right. And I have the power, so I'm right. I am honored to be the first CEO of a private corporation to become a member of the United Nations Security Council. Unfortunately, my appearance today has been clouded by a flurry of speculation 
that my company is developing a weapon of mass destruction which would be capable of targeting specific ethnic groups. I want to address these allegations head on. Are we developing such a weapon? No, we are not. Because we've already developed it. But with all due respect, the United Nations is a relic from a different time when nations were unique in their ability to solve the world's problems. But that just isn't the case anymore. Primarily because you have outsourced the job to me. I have sent people to die in your wars. So I feel uniquely qualified to tell you, your wars don't work. <laughs> Which is why my priorities have changed from profits to policy. Because politicians don't know how to solve problems. But I do. So let's be clear. I am here to solve the world's problems. And I believe the world's problems begin with you. The world is asking one question. Why did I attack the United States? The United States has had the world in a constant state of war for over a hundred years. Time and again, we have seen the catastrophic results of this belligerent, militaristic policy. These wars haven't led to resolution or peace. These wars have only led to more wars. The United States has set the agenda because they wielded the biggest stick. Well, no more. This is not the beginning of a war. This is the end of all wars. Citizens, Citizens of, of New Baghdad, Baghdad. Hold strong. Victory is within our grasp. Look around you, and you will see our enemies fall one by one. Each and every one of you can be agents of change. Yes, we will suffer losses. We will suffer setbacks. But make no mistake, we will win. The security that you desire, the security that you deserve, is within our grasp. But it can only be claimed if you are willing to fight for it. Fight for it. I wanted to meet the man whose mission it was to kill me. Our mission was to stop you. <clears throat> but if that meant killing you, I don't think anybody'd be too troubled. Failure is not something we tolerate here at Atlas, so I'm disturbed that three of my best contractors have failed so miserably. But that's the way it has to be. The wheat from the chaff, the strong from the weak. The ancient Spartans knew the true meaning of warfare. But that truth has been lost to us for two millennia. What of your son, Will? What was he? Wheat or chaff? Will was the victim of the misguided policies of the United States government. Will died fighting for what he believed in. Of course, the tragedy is... Dying for what you believe in doesn't make it true. You're not young, but you are strong, Cormac. So I give you 20 minutes to bleed out. Time enough to consider whether it was all worth it. The prodigal son returns. I believed in you. 
I gave you a second chance. Hello, Mitchell. Don't you fucking move. I could ask the same of you. He's hacking into our exos! Come out of ammo! You rely too much on those things. The city is falling, it's over! What I have started won't end with me. It's bigger than me, and it's certainly bigger than you! You think I'm a monster? That's only because you don't have the conviction to do what's necessary. Necessary? The attack on America? Unleashing Manticore? Killing thousands of innocent people? I'm saving the world from itself. When there's no one left to challenge Atlas, there will be no more wars. There had to be sacrifices along the way. Yeah, twisted fucks throughout history have used the same argument. I don't know who stopped the launch. They'll bring this entire building down on top of you! I could have killed you in the prison camp. I could kill you now, but I won't. I'm not a monster. Mitchell, try to hit the release on your exo. Now mine. It's not working. There's no time. If he gets away, this will all have been for nothing. Go. No! Don't let Irons get away! Hurry, Mitch! Keep going! You either pull me up, or this whole building goes down and we go down with it! Mitchell! What are you doing? What are you doing? Mitchell! I gave you that arm! Mitchell! I gave you a second chance! I've got you, mate. I've got you. It was only gonna end one way for me. Irons gave me a second chance. And I gave it back. He thought he could solve the world's problems. If he did have the answer, he took it with him to the grave. But he was right about one thing. This wasn't the end. It was just the beginning. No father should have to lose his son. It goes against the natural order of things. Without our sons, we have no future. 
I've spent my life fighting stupidity and cowardice for a better world, where good people can prosper and thrive without fear. I know the cost. I see it every day, and I accept it. But I can't accept this. Will's tragedy can't be for nothing. I'll make sure of that. This is not where it ends. This is where it begins. I checked in on Mitchell today. Gideon's kicking his ass, but he'll get there. He's got a good head on his shoulders, and that same determination that Will had. I can see why they were close. The Marines, in their infinite wisdom, deemed him unfit for duty. Can't fight with one arm. Never tell a soldier what he can't do. If anyone deserves a second chance, it's guys like Mitchell. Give me an army of men like him, and there's nothing Atlas can't do. Lagos. If there were a better example of government ineptitude, I haven't seen it. The KVA walked in like they owned the place, like it was their right to take whatever they wanted. Helpless, the officials come to me. They came shocked that a few well-armed men can bring a nation so great, so powerful, to its knees. What sort of men are they? They ask. I tell them they are simply men who are willing to do whatever it takes to achieve their goals. Without emotion, without bias. And once you understand this most basic of facts, you have everything you need. Above-ground nuclear power facilities have been a tactical hazard since their inception. In 2048, Atlas submitted a lengthy report to the Defense Department on the security risks. I guess they didn't like the findings, because they buried the report. I think they gave us the security contract just to shut us up. But that's not why I accepted the job. I took the contract because Atlas would give the taxpayer the best return on their buck. We spent millions on concrete reinforcements. We build anti-aircraft defenses. But our greatest achievement? Eliminating human error. You can build your defenses as strong as you like, but the human race is the weakest link in any system. When an attack does come, and I have no doubt it will, then mark my words. It will be because someone has left the door unlocked. You can't protect what you can't control. Leaders lead. Success or failure comes down to the choices we make. Capturing Dr. Danois and bringing him to justice would be a decisive step forward in the hunt for Hades, but what purpose does it serve to prosecute this man for his crimes if we can use him to prevent future crimes against humanity? Hundreds, maybe thousands have been killed by this man's experiments, but what if the results could one day benefit humanity and save lives? Is it wrong to put that knowledge to use, regardless of how it was obtained? It's only right that we respect the dead. What better way to honor them than give meaning to their demise? Scientific data exists outside any moral framework. It's a resource that can be exploited for good or bad. The choice is ours. But to choose to do nothing with it is no choice at all. It is to accept that innocent people died for nothing. A mission of this scale is a serious endeavor in the best of circumstances. Operating in the middle of a busy tourist destination is, without doubt, extremely risky. But the risk is the key to our success. Hades has gambled on our humanity. No government can survive the public outcry if hundreds of innocent tourists are killed in a botched mission. Hades knows this. But we're not the government, and our power does not come from popular mandate. The government could have stopped us, the United Nations could have stopped us, but they didn't. Why? Because they think I've stepped into my own trap. They've seen what Atlas can do, and they know how powerful Atlas has become. They're afraid, more afraid of me than they are of Hades. And with the KVA on the run, who is left to disrupt their status quo? They look at us, and instead of seeing our success, they see a threat. Someone too powerful to control, too powerful to stop. And so they've gambled on our failure and their right to be afraid. Failure is not an option for us. As long as we deliver Hades' head on a stick, no one will want to stop us. They'll want to follow us. If you want to sell people on your vision, show them. 
They call this part of the world the cradle of civilization. For 10,000 years, it was the center of trade and culture, home to kings, caliphates, despots, and dictators. The first images of war I ever saw came from this place. Two wars in two decades with nothing much to show for it. I saw how wars quickly became quagmires, if not prosecuted effectively. If ever there was somewhere that represented the utter failure of governance, Baghdad was it. While our leaders left this place to its fate, I took this as an opportunity to seize our destiny. Fifty years of rot, and we rebuild it in five. Now, New Baghdad is more than just a thriving city. It's a symbol of what's to come. On days like these, it's hard to remember what progress looks like. Billions of dollars, years of research. The human body is not a machine that we can simply rebuild. Tissue damage takes time to heal. Cells take time to grow. We are mortal creatures, and time is never our friend. We've successfully accelerated the growth process, but the cells are unable to sustain themselves after a certain period. Nevertheless, Danois continues to be a valuable asset. Without Danois, Manticore would have died at the developmental stage. Disloyalty? There is no greater crime. There is no punishment harsh enough. They must have recruited Mitchell. I saw something in him, something you rarely see in a man. A leader. Something of myself, maybe. A man who can follow blindly, yet still think for himself. Will had to strike out on his own. Disloyal? I used to think so. But maybe I was wrong. I like to think Will would have come back into the fold, given time. In order for a butterfly to be born, a caterpillar must die. At a certain point, imaginal cells are triggered in the caterpillar's DNA. And these cells remain dormant, but once activated, they suddenly behave like a cancer, aggressively attacking the healthy cells. The cancerous cells grow, and the caterpillar is eventually destroyed, but the cancerous cells become the basis of new life form, a butterfly. And so, the cycle continues. So cruel, yet so beautiful. Our greatest advances can equally lead to our destruction. Manticore is the fork in the road. One path leads to death, a weapon more powerful than anything before it, and the other to life, the regeneration of human cells, the conquest of death itself. Immortality. You can turn anything into a weapon. It just takes imagination. Some of the most successful military campaigns succeeded simply because no one ever imagined it was possible. If you're planning to take out the most powerful naval force on the planet, forget about doing it in the open water. Strike from the depths of the ocean or strike before it's even had a chance to leave port. By collapsing the bridge on the fleet, I will accomplish two things. The first is strategic, disabling the U.S. Third Fleet. The second, symbolic. For a century, the Golden Gate Bridge has stood for U.S. technological innovation and might. Destroy a powerful symbol of strength, and you turn it into an even more powerful symbol of weakness. Make an adversary feel weak, and they will become weak. A cowardly act of terrorism? Who the hell are they kidding? I went up against the largest naval fleet to ever sail the oceans with a small company of highly skilled and highly motivated special operatives and won! They can spin it a thousand different ways, but the images speak for themselves. Cowardly? No. I stand by my actions. Terrorism? <laughs> Most certainly. If your actions do not inspire fear and terror in the hearts of your adversary, then you have no business waging war. The attack came as I predicted it would. 
in forcing them to react, they reacted foolishly because they are powerless to respond in any other way. An affront to their power is an affront to their very existence, but their show of strength, might, and resolve will merely expose their complete impotence. Power? They have no real power. They have propaganda. They have resources. They have committees and budgets, votes and vetoes, propositions and tabled amendments. All useless. Tomorrow, if we wake up at all, we will wake up to a new dawn, and that's when the real work begins. This moment has been years in the making. Billions of dollars. The years of research, the setbacks, and scientific breakthroughs. Many doubted that this day would come, but it has arrived. The genie is out of the bottle. Manticore exceeded all expectations and performed beautifully. Even now, having seen it with my own eyes, it feels like a miracle. I walked completely untouched as hundreds of enemy combatants lay dying all around me, struck down on the battlefield where they fought. Every man has a unique DNA, a code that is his and his alone, just as each man's destiny is his and his alone. Whoever controls Manticore controls that destiny of mankind. Nothing and nobody can stand in our way. The enemy is at our gate, but we will never let them win. What I've started will continue whether I'm here to see it or not. I'm merely an agent for change, guiding us toward our shared destiny. Our children will live to see the end of terror, of famine, of oppression, and brutality. A world where all necessities will be provided. A world free from the tyranny of government, of artificial differences and false beliefs. A world united under one flag.